just how much difference does spending money make to how much fun you can have on an e-mountain bike. Well, we've been saving our pennies to bring you Budget Bike versus Superbike. And with the two ponies perched on some birch, it is time to whip them into action on the first challenge, a very steep bank. It's a zigzag and it is very, very steep. Now I'm thinking there's only gonna be one winner in this test and that's gonna be the super lightweight 160 mil travel high bike all mountain. And for many reasons, because it does have suspension on the back for traction on the climb. It's got a super low gearing, 1052. Uh, and also it's got more torque, 85 newton meters versus 70 newton meters on the Yamaha PWSE on this budget bike with no suspension, therefore no traction, and also a pretty shoddy tire. Right, so select extra power mode seat down, engage traction control via the 2.8 tire with about 20 PSI in it. Now, the quickest way to get this challenge done is one try. So we're in and we're out. Take it or leave it. The pressure is on because cameraman has actually already been up here. Oh, that's steep. That's one zig. And I think you'll find that that is one zag. And that is why you pay the big bucks, because that is a super bike in action. Now then, onto this little pony. Gearing, far higher. Tire, far more rubbish. Hasn't got the extra power mode. Will I switch on? Uh, no seat dropper, so I cannot um, change my weight distribution as I'm going up the bank. Actually, I don't think I'm even going to be getting up the bank, but let's give it a go. Okay, we're going for a run up. I think that's one nil. No traction on the tire. Uh, and I think bottom line is gearing's too high and 70 newton meters versus 85 on the old mountain. Need more power, Steve. More power. You haven't got enough power in your legs. And maybe no power in myself. Let me introduce you to probably the most boring feature you will ever come across on a trail center or a bike park anywhere in the world. Right. I mean, that says it all, doesn't it? Every person that's gone around this corner says hello. This guy will definitely say hello. I guarantee you. Hi, mate. You all right? Yeah. See, I've been this guy say hello as well. Hiya. Yeah. Like I said, berms. You got acres of time. I know it, you know it. Berms are incredibly boring, but they're littered everywhere in trail centers and bike parks all over the world. So, test number two is the boring berm challenge. Righty, this one we're going to roll in to the berm and probably going to be brakes off after all. You don't need to brake in a berm, and it's simply A to B, which bike's the fastest. My prediction is because we have a smooth surface and the brakes aren't gonna come into account, uh, and of course this is a hard tail, so um, I, I think this bike could do well on this test. Precious? Precious, I'm not precious about it, no. Are you precious about it? No. Oh, pressures! Yeah. Okay, pressures, yeah, pressure, a lot of pressure. I'm feeling the pressure on this one, yeah. No, no, pressure what? in your tires. Oh, pressure on the tires, yeah, there is pressure on the tires, yeah. No, 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 how much? Oh, how much what? How much is the bike? No. This is, a uh, good point, this is 19.99, and the high bike is 5,599. Uh, so, tire pressures in both bikes is 25 PSI. Now, bear in mind, there are different compounds on both tires, so that probably might lean it in the favor of the, you know, just say it. Oh, that way. Now, I actually think that the hardtail was quicker around that corner, but we'll find out the times when we get back to the office because I think the reason for that is just simply more direct. 
Right, it is time for the braking challenge. Now, uh, time to be a little bit more serious here because after all, it's, uh, the brakes are a critical part of the e-mountain bike. Now, on the hardtail bike, we have 160 mil rotors and one pot calipers, whereas on the superbike, four pot calipers and 200 mil rotors. I think there's only gonna be one winner and I'm a little bit scared, I have to say. Well, off the brakes to you. What, seriously? <laughs> oh, f oh, oh, no, 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 ah! Oh. ah! Right, it's gonna measure that out. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Eight, nine. Oh, that's why I started there, look. That's why I started. So I need to meet, keep that consistent. Was that 30, 30 yards? Liam, what's, what's the yards into meters? Not a clue. What do you mean, not a clue? Not a clue. You're from the modern generation? So we've got an angle here of about 30 degrees and speed, entry speed. Well, I'll be able to tell you that because it's on my display. Ready? Ah, 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 ah. Shouldn't have skidded. 42 kilometers an hour to zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, stretching. Ah. 16 and a bit. Half the distance. Half the distance. It doesn't look half the distance though. Look, that looks more than half. 16 and 16 is 32, Liam. Yeah, and how many was the last one? 30, was it? I don't know. Anyhow, it's a lot better. <laughs> so uh, I think some of the other factors involved there is the uh, the large volume 2.8 tire on the high bike, on the all mountain high bike, uh, combined with suspension, which means you can really get the anchors into the ground really more effectively than on a hard tail with a shoddy tire. So it's not just the brakes, it's all the other components too. So we are now in the skills area to take on the next challenge, and that is a log. A very rotten one, up and over the log. Now, the reason we're doing this is because A, you might come across a fallen tree out on the trail, and B, if you're tackling a technical climb and there's a step in it, you need to power up over the step to make sure you maintain momentum to get you up the hill. Now, there's a difference in power between the two bikes. The uh, hardtail has got 70 Nm of torque and the newer, slightly more luxurious uh, high bike on mountain has got 85 Nm with that Peter X2 motor. And of course, I will be in extra power mode. Now what we mustn't do is actually uh, sump the bike out. So what we're trying to do is get momentum and get some drive, keep the front wheel in the air. Easier said than done. Sort of like that. <laughs> so remember, you've got a bash guard on uh, most e-mountain bikes, but if you bash that into a rock, not so good. So technique is key. Maybe the technique wasn't so good on that occasion. Now another plus of the uh, old mountain bike is that you can preload the suspension and also you've got uh, increased uh, tire profile on the ground, so more grip. Whereas this, a shoddy tire and no preload. Not too easy. Here we go. Bit more speed. <laughs> Honestly, it is actually possible to do the log on a less expensive bike. You simply need to have the skills to do it. Uh, my skills aren't so good today, but I'm gonna give it a go. Boom. So, basically, you still get over the log, you just use a different technique and you don't use the torque of the motor just as much. On most occasions when you see a cheap bike versus super bike, you get a downhill section and pretty much all the time it's obvious the more expensive bike will get down the quicker and it's actually down to rider skill as well. So what we're doing here is we've got a downhill section and we've closed the track off and we're going to do, uh, we're going to show you just how much better a super bike is at climbing a technical section. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's a bit wet here today, so don't expect this to go right first time, or indeed any time.
but it is a super bike after all. <laughs> Okay guys, next up is the sprint challenge because let's face it, we don't always ride our e-mountain bikes under 25 kilometers an hour. So, do things such as suspension and grippy tires affect the performance above that restriction? And how much drag is in the motor of the PWX2 versus the PWX E? Now what's quite interesting is the display on both the superbike and the budget bike is exactly the same. So I could see that I was actually doing exactly the same speed as I crossed the finish line. Now you might slowly be thinking that we, yes that's me and the cameraman, have been slight bitches about the budget bike. Which is partly true, but then again when you come to certain places such as trail centers, reds and blues and green trails, this bike really does come into its own. Plus, don't forget you've got a great range with that 400 watt hour battery, 78 meters of torque from that motor. So again, like I said, it's horses for courses. And in a place like this, this bike is perfect. <laughs> Well folks, I think you'll agree that an e-mountain bike will open up a totally new dimension of riding to what you can do on a non-e-mountain bike. But how much money do you spend? Well, as we've proven, both bikes are super capable. But you know what? Regardless of how much money you'll spend, you will have fun on any e-mountain bike. I've had great fun today on this one, and I've had great fun on that one. I'm looking forward to doing loads more. <laughs>